another full professional mastering lesson. This is an alternative hip hop track that I mastered for artist Young Hustler called Heart Painted Black with some strong little peep vibes. That was my reference for this song. And it required some work, but it turned out great. So I thought this could be a great one to do a lesson on. In this video, we're gonna hear how we went from this. To this. Of course, using a combination of analog gear and plugins, mostly analog. In this lesson, all the settings for the plugins and the hardware, but most important, why. Part of this lesson is gonna be free for everyone, but if you wanna see the full video and many more mixing and mastering courses, click the join button down here, become a Mixbus TV member. Let's get to it. Hello everyone, welcome back to Mixpest TV. Hope you're having a great day. Before we start, please check the info box down below for my mixing courses on Pro Mix Academy, free plugins, discounts, and special offers. And if you wanna really up your mix and mastering game, click the join button down here, become a Mixpest TV member, access the already big and always growing library of full mixing courses, start to finish on many genre, mastering courses, special videos, and you also get mix consultations with media, Skype, or email. Let's get to the video. Okay, so before we start listening the before and after mix versus master, notice one thing. I matched the peak level. You can see here from my meter, both peak a minus 0.1, okay? So the difference that you hear is not peak level, it's just density, harmonic content, and basically everything that we are gonna do today to turn that mix into that master. Notice one thing. This is one of the very few times in which the client had a specific reference for this mix, okay? And the reference is Little Peep Hellboy. I'm not gonna be able to play Little Peep track, otherwise YouTube is gonna take down the video and blah, 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 blah. So if you want to hear a reference, the track that I had as a reference is Lil Peep Hellboy, so you can compare. Now, let's listen again to the mix versus the master really quick. My mind is under All right, let's go here in this breakdown. Mix first again. All right, let's go here before this breakdown so you can see the transition, which is important. Remember, mastering, and we are starting the lesson right here, 90% of a mastering engineer job is listening. Spend 90% of the time listening and 10% of the time making moves, whether you move a plugin or a piece of analog, okay? So listen to the transition here. Master. We got the general idea of how the mix was sounding versus the final product, the master track. And the first things you notice are extremely apparent on this one. If you listen to the mix, it's not a bad mix. The crest factor wasn't bad, even though you can see it has some pretty wild spikes and is overall a dynamic mix. And if you look at the master, while I brought it to commercial levels, I didn't push this extremely loud. We are about minus seven LUFS, okay? But I maintained somewhat the dynamic and the flow of the track that's important. The first thing that you notice comparing the mix versus the master, and of course, the clarity. The clarity in the mid range, in the top end, that's the biggest difference between the two. And it was where the mix really lacked, especially in comparison to Little Peep uh, reference that I was given. Now, here's the thing. I did not like the <laughs> reference track. If you listen to that track, it's extremely harsh and extremely bright. And mind you, the client gave me that reference, but he also told me, hey, I trust you, you know, you do your thing. That's why I come to you. So my goal there was do what's best for the track 
going in that direction as much as possible. So in that direction of the reference without the harshness. So basically I listened to that and I thought, well, we can actually sound better than that. And you be the judge. But so clarity, mid range and top end, that is the style. That is the style for this genre. So, and you also needed the low end which was excessive and with way too much energy in the sub range to be tightened again to be closer to the reference track to that style which didn't have that big of a low end actually the low end on that track is pretty skinny and that's one thing that i decided for this track is no this track is going to have a much better low end than that not as extended and out of control as it was in the mix but still bigger and warmer than the reference track. Let's start taking a look at the processing, okay? The first processing is common for me to start with this one is the Vice EQ1 from Softube. You can see my moves. We only have two bands active. The first one is a cut here at 17.30 Hertz and a boost here at 3.5K, just a little more than one dB, okay? I actually added this one after my analog chain, but we'll go in order of slots. So with this one. You're not gonna hear much uh, difference with this one because like I said, I added it after just to add a little bit of a uh, more mid range here and tighten the low end a little more. Why I did this after? Because I already had the tone that I wanted from the analog gear. I just wanted a little more. 3.k and I wanted to do it in a transparent way. I didn't want to touch the tone of the song. Let's go to the next one, which is a trick that I did on another master when we mastered the side trance track for Foggy Ray. This mid band here and this low band here. So I wanted to address the first problem, too much low end, bypass this. This is simple, it's center around 50 Hertz and it takes down the 808, not the kick. Why not the kick? Because I need the punch. So the attack is all the way slow almost. So we start controlling the excessive low end. You see the bump here below 50 hertz, okay, which is way too much. We're not gonna cut it, but it's way too much and needs to be controlled. We are in 6 dB range, so you see the reduction is like few dB, but it makes a difference. Driving fast on a freeway. It's so hard to stay on track. The next thing is this mid band here. I'm triggering this band that is centered at 2K with the kick. So every time the kick hits, it boosts this 4K. This gives me a little more punch for the kick. This is some form of preventive work because I know I'm gonna limit, because I know I'm gonna compress, okay? Not that much difference yet. The big difference, of course, comes with the hardware. Next is the VASE DS1 MK3. With this one, I'm again controlling a little more that 808, that boomy and excessive low, deep low end. It's important to look what? That I'm using this one in band selective mode. So I'm only compressing with a low pass filter, the bottom end. And in this case, I centered the frequency at 55. So we are compressing from 55 and below. And we are just touching it a little bit. Driving fast on a freeway. It's so hard to stay on track. All right, when we compress the low end and the sub range in general, you want to be kind of slow with the settings because too fast settings for attack and release will create stutters, will create distortion and artifacts. So I'm compressing no more than 1 dB on this one. This track needed more harmonic content. So I added it with a harder, but I needed a little more in this case. I made the decision to use Oxford inflator on it. It's not something that I advise in mastering unless you're very, very confident of what you do and you have a, a perfect monitoring system because it can get distorted and bad really fast, okay? You're gonna hear some harmonic content here. Driving fast on a freeway It's so hard to stay on track My mind is under attack I painted black Where am I at? More inside my 
by keeping the curve fader here slightly above the mid lane, we add mostly mid range and top end harmonics. Next, I added Sooth and I added Sooth after I did my work with the analog gear because by boosting the mid range at the top end, the snare was coming out a little harsh. I really focused Sooth to just catch the frequency of the snare. Driving fast on a freeway. It's so hard to stay on track. My mind is under attack. I painted black. Where am I at? Where is my Okay, you do hear a little bit of difference, but think that uh, this signal feeds the analog chain. So by removing a little bit of mid-range and harsh frequency around 4K with Soothe, I was exciting all the machines less. Next, I added vitamin, and if you pay attention, I set the frequency at 15K. Okay, so really, really high. The reason is because the reference track had a higher in-level, in-the-mix hi-hat compared to this. Don't have the mix, I can't turn the hi-hat up. So I was trying with this one to catch the hi-hat and I didn't want to grab anything else that I was already boosting. After that, the Vase De-esser. And again, if you look at this, I am setting the range only to minus two dB. So that's the maximum amount that I'm taking away. And I'm using only this first band here. So not the very top, but again, where the harsh consonant and that snare is, because that snare was a little high. Because we have some sporadic spikes, like this one, here and there, I use the TC limiter before hitting the analog gear again. Let's just see how much is working. Okay, so it's extremely precise. You see, it goes most of the time, it doesn't work, and it always works on those tall peaks, giving me a little bit of headroom, okay? And it's completely transparent. I'm using the soft clip in hard mode, so not the limiting part of this uh, plugin. After all that, we go out into our analog chain, and this is the sequence. The first unit that we hit are the Neve. 542s here next to me. You can see the settings. I'm being very conservative with this as usual. I'm using the 50 IPS, which gives me the tape bump around 50 Hertz. You can see the saturation and the mix blend. And then I'm using the red transformer here, which is the brightest one. There's a blue and a red. That gives me that very modern, very recognizable top end. You will hear that. After the Neve, we go into the SSL Fusion and we hit the HPF at 40 Hertz. This was crucial to tighten that low end, that excessive low end. And you will think oh, 40 Hertz is a lot. Yeah, but first of all, we are not brick walling 40 Hertz and below. We're just using a slope to reduce 40 and below. And then we are adding low end later on in another way. After the SPL, we go into the SymphQ by Heritage Audio NG Mastering Compressor, okay? The WES Audio. You can see the settings here on the screen. You can see the settings there. There's a little THD that adds some mid-range saturation. Post-compression, I have three more units and I'm gonna show you the routing here in the patch app. I have the 5500, which is here next to me, the Fatso After, and the Maggie Q. And we'll see the settings after. And after that, we go into the spacecraft on the moon here next to me to do some stereo widening and stereo manipulation. All right, let's listen to the Neves by themselves without and with. Okay, so that very recognizable top end, that brightness, which is the transformer, the red transformer is a form of exciter, it's not, it's not really EQ. And that 
absolutely gorgeous low end. Add that to the general saturation that this unit has and right there you already have a track that sounds a lot more, I hate the word, but it's true, professional, okay, just with that. Then we go to the Fusion, let's take a look at it. So in the Fusion we have, you see, Vintage, Dry, Violet EQ, HF Compressor and Stereo Image. So without and with all the processing there. Okay, so we hear that's a big difference. We are adding the vintage drive, we are adding top end with the EQ, with the Violet EQ. We're controlling the snare and the S's, which are not really harsh in this mix, but still we are gonna boost the top end even more later and add in a little bit of space and the insert is out. So nothing else is in, just the fusion. So let's activate one at a time. Uh, so for this particular track, this was the best top end. The SPL didn't work, I tried this band here, but this was the best shelf. On the SPL, I am boosting two bands, these two, and removing a couple of dB, one dB and a half here, a 425. And I want to show you why. This was a resonance that was going to become a problem when we actually boost the volume, okay? Let's activate this and let's activate one band at a time. This is really for the mid-range because this band is boosting around 500, this band is boosting around 550. One one band at a time. Very natural, this has no color, just part of the music. But I want to boost this frequency that I cut a little bit so you can hear the resonance that was going to be a problem later on. All right, this speaks by itself. <laughs> the API, when it's the right unit, nothing can beat it, nothing can touch it or even get close to it. The reason because I put the Fatso after is because I wanted to tame a little bit all these added mid-range, because I didn't want to end up like the uh, reference track, okay? Which we weren't going to, but the Fatso really helps uh, with the little bit of saturation you will hear and you will see the lights, okay? But this adds some body, 160, and a little more of that uh, shine at the top. Being post-compression, it sounds more open. That's why it's post-compression, okay? Let's hear with and without. It's not easy to use. It doesn't go on everything, but when it works, it's just magic. This video is a 44K just for the sake of the video, but of course the track was mastered at 96, so all the processing of the hardware, they sound better, they're captured better with the 80 plus before going into the limiting stage. In this case, if you compare this track with the reference, which had the same uh, LUFS, this sounds a lot louder and it doesn't hurt your brain and your ears with the harshness. And this is it for this new mastering lesson. If you are a member, you were able to watch the entire lesson. If you're not a member, well, you should, but you've been able to watch most of it and I hope it was still useful. And if you liked the video, please don't forget to leave a like. Check the info box down below before you go and follow Mixbus TV on all the other social media. There's, there are big news going on right there. Actually, thank everyone for the congratulation. Thank you for watching. Subscribe if you haven't already. See you next time. Hands on my